What is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear CQRS? It's probably either mediator, separate read and write databases, or event sourcing. But none of these have anything to do with CQRS. So in this video, I want to clarify what CQRS is, why it's actually super simple, and what are the benefits of using it. So let's dive in. I prepared a simple minimal API, which has an in-memory book repository. It has a dictionary, which is going to store our books in memory when we run the application, and we're going to lose all of the books whenever we restart the application. So you have the get method for fetching all of the books, fetching the book by ID, adding, updating, or deleting a book. So pretty straightforward, just an in-memory repository. We also have a set of matching endpoints for all of these methods. So we have a method for fetching all of the books, fetching a single book, and then creating, updating, or deleting a book. So let's check out how all of these work really quickly. First, I'm going to send a post request to our API to create the book domain-driven design written by Eric Evans, and it has 560 pages. So if I send this, we get a 200 OK. If I try to fetch this book by the ID, you're going to see we get back the correct response. And if I fetch all of the books, you'll see that we have the book that we just created. If I try to update the name to say Domain Driven Design Volume 2, we send this, we get 204 no content. And if I fetch all of the books again, you'll see that the name is updated. Lastly, if I try to delete the book, I get back the 204 no content response. And if I try to fetch the book by the ID, I'll get a null response because I just deleted the book. So everything seems to be working just fine with the in-memory repository. And let's put our focus on CQRS. Before CQRS, there was just CQS, which stands for Command Query Separation. The idea behind CQS is really, really simple. You separate in your code methods that are responsible for reading data, which are your queries, from the methods that are responsible for updating the data, which are commands. So something like updating the book is a command, adding a new book is a command, and removing a book is a command. And fetching a list of values, like in these two cases, is a query. CQS just states that you can't have a method that is both a command and a query. So it should either update the state, making it a command, or it should only read the data and return it, making it a query. It's not allowed to have a method that is both going to, let's say, add a new book and also read that book from the source and then return it. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, and you should really be pragmatic in your implementation, but what CQS tries to do is exactly this. So you can't mix and match commands and queries. Your methods are either commands, they update state, or they are queries, they return data. If you take a look at our in-memory book repository, you'll notice that it really does follow the CQS pattern, meaning our methods are either updating the book's dictionary, or they are reading from the book's dictionary. We don't have a method that is doing both. What's also important for commands is that they all return void, meaning they don't return anything. And for queries, you return some sort of response, in this case, either a book or a list of books. Now that you know what the CQS pattern is, let's talk about CQRS. CQRS stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. The CQRS pattern builds on top of CQS by further making the difference clear between commands and queries and separating them into different classes or objects. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to add a new class inside of the repositories folder and I'm going to call it books write repository. This is going to take care of the command side of CQRS. So what we want to do is take all of these methods here, which are commands, and move them into the book write repository. What's missing here is the books collection. I'm going to do something super simple, and I'm just going to turn this into a static class, and I'm going to make the books dictionary public so that we can easily access it from our repositories. So this is going to be 
in memory book repository and we access the books field and the same applies in the other cases below so now all our commands are inside of the books write repository and we're going to take the same approach for the books read repository so let's create that class so this is going to be books read repository and we're going to take out the methods from our in-memory book repository, which we had earlier, and move them into the books read repository. And of course, I just need to add here in-memory repository and access the books field, and the same applies here. So now we have further separated our queries into a single class from our commands, which also live in their own class. Now, the in-memory book repository which we were registering as a singleton is now going to be replaced by the books read repository and the same applies for the books write repository now these don't need to be singletons because they are using the static field but i'm just going to leave them as singletons for simplicity's sake what's left to do is to fix our endpoints to use the proper services instead of the in-memory book repository and this is a get endpoint it's going to be using the books read repository. The same applies for the get by ID endpoint and the post put and delete endpoints are going to be using the books write repository. So let me fix this and now we should be good. So what did we achieve with this? We went from command query separation. So we either have commands and queries to CQRS, command query responsibility segregation. So now we have to classes that are either responsible for commands, which is the books write repository, or for queries, which is the books read repository. And everything else functions just the same. By splitting our commands from our queries, we are achieving a separation of concerns between writing and reading the data, and our classes become more focused further enforcing the single responsibility principle. So this class is responsible for writing and this class is responsible for reading. It doesn't say anything about having to use separate databases. It doesn't say anything about having to use event sourcing. And we certainly don't need mediator to implement this pattern. It's really all about the logical separation in your code of the flows where you are writing data from the flows where you are reading data. Notice that we are also using the same underlying store of data, which is our dictionary of books. The same applies if you are using a SQL database. It's perfectly fine to use the same table for both commands and queries. Now, if we take this a step further to something that would be close to what Mediator tries to achieve is having separate objects for each of our commands. So let's say we had an add book command. It would look something like this. So let's say add book command. Now this class would be responsible for this command only. So let's move the command here. And now if we want to add a book, we need to use this command. It makes sense to rename this to handle because you handle this command and you can either register it as a service or we can use it directly in our endpoint. So let's get rid of our books write repository and we can turn this into a new add book command and we call the handle method. So we are still following CQRS. We are separating our commands from our queries and we are taking it a step further by making separate objects for each command that we have. If we take this further, let's also replace this method here with an appropriate command. So I'm going to add a new class, which is going to be my update book command. And it's only going to have a single method inside. And I'm going to rename it to handle. Now, if I go back to my endpoint, I'm going to replace this with a new update book command and we call the handle method and we pass it the book. And let's also do the same for the removing of a book. So this is going to be the delete book command and we can take what we had in our book write repository and we can move it in here. 
rename this to handle and inside of the endpoint we can now invoke a new delete book command and we call the handle method and we pass it the id we no longer need the books write repository inside of these endpoints so they become really concise and let's also take care of the book read repository and our queries so let's add a class that is going to be the get books query which is going to fetch all of our books and we're going to copy the method for fetching all of the books so let's move it here call it handle and back in our endpoint we're going to get rid of the repository here and we're going to return a new get book query and we're going to call the handle method and all that's left to do is to replace the single method that we have for fetching a book by the id so this is the get book query or you can call it get book by id query to make it clear and let's pass in this method here so move it into our query and call this handle and now our endpoint becomes really simple we just create a new instance of the get book by id query we're going to call the handle method and pass it the id from the route we can remove our repository and now we can also get rid of the books write repository class so i'm going to delete it and we can also get rid of the books read repository class because we moved these queries into separate classes our commands and queries are nicely separated but they're still in the same folder let's say we want to take the free commands that we have and move them into the commands folder i'm also going to update the namespaces while i'm at it and let's add a new folder that is going to contain my queries i'm going to move the two queries that i have into a separate folder and now my commands and queries are completely separated and it would probably make sense to group them into some top level feature folder let's say books and we place our commands and our queries inside of this feature folder now the commands and queries responsible for the books collection are in the same feature folder but they are still clearly separated for all intents and purposes cqrs is actually really simple it all comes down to logically splitting the objects that are responsible for writing the data from the objects that are responsible for reading the data if you want to learn more about implementing the CQRS pattern with Mediator, you should take a look at this video next, smash the like and subscribe button on your way out, and until next time, stay awesome!